Hi, it's Hope and welcome to the video. This is going to be April releases I'm excited for and I believe there is eight books on this list. So let's get started with with on April 1st we have The Stone Eater by Carol Beth Anderson and this I've technically already read. I was a part of the ARC team but I just had to mention it in this video because of how good it was. The Stone Eater is the third and final book in the Magic Eaters trilogy, That the first book being The Frost Eater. So I'm just going to hold up this book to explain because I cannot explain. There are the bookmarks. Um, but because I cannot explain The Stone Eater since it's the third book. But essentially in The Frost Eater we have... Um, Nora, who is the, like, country's princess, and her and her father are going, are, like, ending this, like, tour of the country, and when she is in this village, she meets this boy named Cray, who has these two different magical abilities. In this world, you... My bookmarks. <laughs> bookmarks just fell out here, but essentially in this... The magic is, if you have the ability to do a certain type of magic, the fuel for the magic is whatever your magic is correspond with. So for example, we have Cray, who is the boy that Nora meets, is a feather lyster, and a frost lyster is technically the term, or um, feather eater and frost eater, and essentially, so like, he would eat feathers and ice to have access to his abilities. Nora is a frost eater, but there are so many other kind of magic people, and essentially, because of Cray's abilities, Nora ask him, asks him to um, go back to the palace to kind of train more, and Cray agrees to this because he believes that maybe befriending Nora could help him find his missing girlfriend, Zaysha, who has been missing for, I think it's like two months. I think. So the Stone Eater is like the finale of this and everything wraps up so nicely and all of that. Um, next on, these next two books are on April 6th. So on April 6th we have Blessed Monsters by Emily A. Duncan and that is the third and final book in the Something Dark and Holy trilogy. The first book being Wicked Saints which I have only read Wicked Saints. I haven't read um, Ruthless Gods, which is the second book, but I plan on once Blessed Monsters is out released to just binge read the series. So I, even though I've read Wicked Saints, I cannot describe it really. So I'm going to read the inside of the dust jacket because like it simply describes it. A girl named Nadia who hears the whispers of the gods inside her head. A prince surrounded by desperate suitors and deadly assassins. A monster hidden behind pale, tortured eyes, and a smile that cuts like a knife. The path of these three characters become intertwined during a centuries-long war filled with sinners and saints, magic and mystery, and a star-crossed romance that threatens to tip the scales between the dark and light forever. And that is like, the easiest way to describe it is like the first book's description. Um, Blessed Monsters, again, is a third book, so... I'm excited to read it. I'm planning on maybe, in, if not in April, probably in May, binge reading the series because like I did really enjoy the first one, but by the time I wanted to read the second book, I already forgot so much of the first book and it's like it's a short book, so like I should be able to do that easily. So also on April 6th, we have The Sky Blues by Robbie Couch. Um, and I'm just going to read the Goodreads because this is one that like, it's not like, oh my god, I need to read it the second it comes out, but it's like, okay, like, I like the premise of this, so I'm just going to read the Goodreads. Sky's small town turns absolutely catastrophic when his secret proposal plans get leaked to the entire school in this witty, heartfelt, and ultimately hopeful debut novel for fans of What If It's Us and I Wish You All The Best. I loved uh, what if it's us and I wish you all the best so that's kind of like why I'm like I think I'll enjoy this 
Sky Baker may be openly gay, but in his small, insular town, making sure he was invisible has always been easier than being himself. Determined not to let anything ruin his senior year, Sky decides to make a splash at his high school's annual beach bum party by asking his crush to prom, and he has 30 days to do it. What's better way than living out loud and proud by pulling off the gayest prom proposal Rock Ledge, Michigan has ever seen? Then Sky's plans are leaked by anonymous hacker in a deeply homophobic e-blast that quickly goes viral. He's fully prepared to drop out and skip town altogether until his classmates give him a reason to fight back when turning his 30-day prom proposal countdown into a school-wide hunt to expose the e-blast perpetrator. But what, if, but what happens at the end of the 30 days? Will Sky get to keep his hard-won visibility, or will his small town blues stop him from being his true self? And just, I don't know, just the idea of like this very queer prom proposal idea getting leaked and trying to figure out who it is, just kind of like um, intrigues me, I guess, and like, when in doubt, give me queer books and I will read them. Now the rest of these books are all released on April 20th, so keep that in mind. So next we have Fate and Flames by Miranda Lynn, and this is the third and final book in the Fae Rising trilogy, and um, the Fae Rising trilogy is a new adult, um, high fantasy face um, series with the first book being Blood and Promise. And at Blood and Promise we follow two main characters, one being Aura who is a high fae who her parents have just died and now she is kind of trying to fulfill a prophecy that has that had been revealed to her. And the second person we follow the second person we follow is Tamir who is a um, like half fae, a lesser fae. Um, and lesser fae are kind of like treated like shit honestly in this world but because of Tamir's healing abilities he has been eyed by the king of the marsh and has been living in the pal palace as the king's healer for years now and when Tamir and his mentor um, accidentally create a truth serum Tamir must try to convince his mentor and the girl he's in love with to escape with him. That is kind of the the bare minimum of the story, um, and Fate and Flames, I'm not like gonna immediately read because the first book I liked, I gave it four stars, but then the second one I gave it, th what did I even give it? I gave it, but the second book I gave three stars because there was a point of view that I didn't like, um, but I do really want, I really, the only reason I want to continue this series um, and read this final book is because there's only one more book and the character stories are wrapped up, but also because I really like where Aura's storyline is going because of this prophecy and just like everything to do with her storyline I love. Um, but this is one that I, I will eventually read within the next like few months here, but it's not like, oh the second it's released, I need to. Uh, next we have Witches Steeped in Gold by Shannon Smart. And this is one that I wasn't really interested in until like the last like month, month and a half when I kept on seeing it pop up in some booktubers like videos that I watch and it just slowly intrigued me I guess. Um, and this I don't know much about so I'm literally going to read the Goodreads re review. Like the, so I'm going to read the Goodreads description. Divided by their order, united by their vengeance. Irea, I don't, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Um, Irea has spent her life in a cell, but every day brings her closer to freedom and vengeance. Vengeance. Jasmine is the queen's daughter. Unlike her sister before her, she has no intention of, di of dying to strength. She, she has no intention of dying to strengthen her mother's power. And sworn enemies, these two witches enter a precarious alliance to take down a mutual threat. But power, is, but power is intoxicating. Revenge is a bloody pursuit, and nothing is certain except the lengths they will go to win this game. And this is a like Jamaican-inspired fantasy about two enemy witches. What else do I need to say? Like, it sounds like it's going to be really good, and like, yeah. 
Now this next one is the one I'm most excited for like literally like, like when I say I'm excited for I mean the second it's released I am going to be binging it and that is The Crown of Gilded Bones by Jennifer L. Armentrout being the third book in the Blood and Ash like series. I don't know how many books are going to be in it but the first book being from Blood and Ash. Now oh, I am so excited for this but um, from Blood and Ash, we follow a maiden named Poppy who essentially, like, can't be looked at, can't be touched, can't interact with people, really, because, like, she's this maiden for this thing. Like, when she, when she needs a new personal guard, a guard named Hawk takes on that position, and it's the story of Hawk and Poppy getting closer while we're dealing with a bunch of other things that are kind of spoilers. Like, all I knew going into this series when I went in is what I just said. And this is now one of my, like, for, like, um, this is now, like, one of my favorite series of all time. I love these characters. I love this world. I'm so excited to see where, um, where this book goes. And we're less than a month out, and I'm just, like, counting down the days, honestly, to this, because I'm, I am just so excited, because, like, where we left off in the ending of A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire is just kind of, like, I'm sorry, fucking what? So, like, this, I'm so excited for. I, like, literally am, like, trying not to, like, fruit, like, freak out, but I'm just so excited for this. Like, again, you bet your ass, the second it's available, it's, like, the second I'm able to read it, I will be. Next, we have These Feathered Flames by Alexandra Overy. I think that is how the last name pronounced. I'm not sure. And for this, I'm going to read the Goodreads description because... I I don't know much about what this is about. The cover is mainly like what I'm interested in and then also the opening Goodreads, li Goodreads line. A queer retelling of the Firebird, a Russian folktale. All I need is a queer retelling and I'm like, okay, I'm here, it's queer. When twin heirs are born in Turin, their fates are decided at a young age. Well, well, Isaveta remained at court to learn the skills she need to be the future queen Asia 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 was taken away to train with her aunt the mysterious firebird who ensured magic remained balanced in the realm but before Asia before Asia's training is completed the ancient power blooms inside of her which can only mean one thing the queen is dead and the new ruler must be crowned as the princesses come to the under, as the princesses come to understand everything their roles entail, they discover who who they can trust, who they can love, and who killed their mother. I probably pronounced those names wrong, and like I don't know how they're pronounced. So like before I read the book, I will look look at how the like a pronunciation guide or something, um, because they're like Russian names, and I'm horrible at pronouncing Russian names, um, but that i don't know just idea of like twins trying to figure out who killed their mother type thing i'm just like yeah sure cover the cover is like what drew me in immediately and it has a pretty high like goodreads rating from like arc reviewers which is like a which is a 4.36 which like that's pretty good so like this one i don't know when i'm gonna pick it up hopefully sometime in this year at least but yeah and the final book that is being released in April that I have heard of and that I am, like, excited for is In Deeper Waters by F.T. Lukens. And this, again, I'm going to read the Goodreads description because pretty much, I think I was on TikTok, like, months ago, like, back in, like, November or December, and somebody showed off this cover and I was just like, that is gorgeous. I need to read this book. I am very much judging a book by its cover. If I see a beautiful cover, it goes on my TBR. Like, well obviously if it has a beautiful cover and it sounds like something I'd like, and this one is definitely it. So um I'm going to read the Goodreads description, so a young prince must rely on the mysterious stranger to save him when he is kidnapped kidnapped during his coming of age tour in the Sweeney adventure that is the gentleman's guide to vice and virtue meets pirates of the caribbean and i loved the gentleman's guide to vice and virtue and i haven't really 
watch the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, but like I've seen parts of it and the parts I've seen I've liked, so I'm just like, sure, like pirates, why not? So Prince Tal has long awaited for his coming of age tour. After spending most of his life cloistered behind the palace walls, as he learns to keep his forbidden mag his forbidden magic secret, he can finally see his family's kingdom for the first time. His first taste of adventure comes his first taste of adventure comes just two days into the journey when their crew discovers a mysterious prisoner on a burning um, derelict vessel. Tasked with watching over the prisoner, Talus tasked with watching over the prisoner, Tal is surprised to feel an intense connection with the roguish Athlan. Um, so when Athlan leaps overboard and disappears, Tal feels re responsible and heartbroken, knowing Athlan could not have survived the deep ocean. That is, until Tal runs into Athlan days later on dry land, very much alive and as charming and secretive as ever. But before they can pursue anything further, Tal is kidnapped by pirates and held ransom. Tal is kidnapped by pirates and held ransom in a plot to reveal his rumored powers and instigate a war. Tal must escape if he hopes to save his family and the kingdom, and Athlan just might be his only hope. That just to me sounds like a fun story. Um because the like, idea of like ooh, this for what this forbidden magic as well as just like how is Athlan able to survive like the open water? Like those are questions I'm just like, hmm, I wanna know. So like this one I'm just excited for. So those were the eight books in April that I'm excited for. There is probably so many other books being released in April that I just haven't heard of or that aren't on my radar um, that I'm sure are amazing. So these are just my my few books that I'm interested in. I hope to pick up some of these in April, especially The Crown of Gilded Bones, like that one, 100% I'm reading. And then I might pick up maybe another one. I don't know. I need to figure out what my TBR is going to be, honestly. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know what April releases you're excited for and if there are any on this list, if it's one not on this list, just leave it, leave a comment in the like comments. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video and bye!